Hey team, Dr. Jake Audi here, and today I'm going to take you through how to induce a TH17 response. What are the signals that come in that tell a TH, uh, a TH cell to become a TH17 cell? Let's jump into it. Mm, boom. Okay, so we need the, um, we're going to need antigen presentation. We're talking about T helper cells, that's always going to happen. And so we're talking about T alpha cells, which means we're talking about CD4 positive cells and the CD4 um, uh, integral membrane protein recognizes the MHC2 molecule and the MHC2 is the professional antigen presenting cell. So this cell up here is probably a macrophage or a dendritic cell, right? It's a professional antigen present, presenting cell. So it's got an MHC2 molecule. Um, so we, this is the first step that we need in a TH17 response. So we've got a T helper cell, a naive T, T helper cell. It's recognized the antigen there, and we wanted to get to TH17 um, activation. What we're going to need is actually a couple of signals here, right? Um, and this is quite interesting, and I love it because this is my area of research, and I wish I could talk to you for hours because um, basically my entire research is what happens after these two receptors are activated. Um, but uh, I can't get into it. It's too much detail, honestly. I've spent, you know, the last five years of my life trying to research this process. So I can't teach it to you in a 10-minute video. But the key thing here is we need two signals. Typically, we need two sim si signals. Um, and these two signals uh, could be TLR activation, for example. And so this could be LPS right here, um, lipopolysaccharide from a gram-negative bacteria, um, activating the TLR receptor, which will cause a phosphorylation cascade and activation of um, uh, a transcription factor called NF kappa B. But we also need a second signal here, and often the second signal is extracellular ATP. Now remember, ATP is a damage-associated molecular pattern because ATP is the energy molecule of the cell, and it should only be inside the cell. There is no reason for it to be in large concentrations outside the cell, unless a cell is popping. So if a cell is undergoing lysis, perhaps it's being attacked by a huge number of bacteria, um, and so the bacteria are creating such an anoxic, horrific environment, toxic environment, that cells start to pop. Um, and when they pop, they will release the ATP. Now the ATP um, over here can be detected uh, by a receptor called P2X7. P2X7. But really, just need, you just need to know that these, this damp receptor is activated here, um, and it can connect to that second signal. So uh, we've got ATP activating this, and this will actually cause iron, it creates a pore in the membrane and we get a potassium efflux. We get a massive iron flux from the cell. But the key thing here is we've got these two signals. Now, what does that mean? That means something really bad is going on. If you've got a little bit of LPS floating around, it might mean you've got a minor infection. If you've got a little bit of ATP, it might mean a couple of cells have popped. Um, maybe you've got a little bit of a tissue damage or something like that. If you've got both, it means you've got a very large bacterial infection that's going to cause problems, right? Because it's killing cells and you're pumping out LPS as well, right? So if you've got these two signals, that's when the macrophage sends up its biggest alarm signal that it's got, right? The most powerful inflammatory cytokine of them all, oh, interleukin-1. Interleukin-1 beta, right? So interleukin-1 beta, it's number one for the reason. It's number one for a reason. This could actually also be interleukin-1 alpha. That would be caused by calcium influx. But anyway, interleukin-1 will come out of this macrophage. Um, and interleukin-1s, both of them, are the most powerful inflammatory cytokines we've got. And so they send the signal to the T helper cell, we've got a real problem here, so you need to turn into a TH17 cell. We don't have time for this whole, you go find a B cell, activate it, the B cell proliferates and produces antibodies, blah, blah, blah. The macrophage is saying, we don't have time for that because I've got two very dangerous signals going on in my cell surface right here. And so I'm going to release IL-1. That's going to bind to the IL-1 receptor 1. There's multiple receptors here. So um, the IL-1 receptor 1 is the inflammatory one. Um, and that's going to activate the TH17, T helper cell turning it into a TH17 cell. Right, so that's how to get a TH17 cell. Now, once again, I've overly simplified this massively. There are several other ways to get TH17 cells going on, and there are a couple of other signaling cascades that can 
um, be happening simultaneously to drive a TA17 response. But that's just a real classic way in which you could induce a TA17 response. Um, up in the next video, we're going to cover what happens in a TA17 response. So now that we've got TA17 cells, what's going to happen?